perfecting worlds of your far-flung universe. And now, may your Father and my Father, who has ever sustained us in all past performances, guide and sustain you and be with you from the moment you leave us and achieve the surrender of your consciousness of personality, throughout your gradual return to recognition of your divine identity, incarnate in human form, and then on through the whole of your bestowal experience on your Urantia, until your deliverance from the flesh and your ascension to our Father's right hand of sovereignty. When I shall again see you on Salvington, we shall welcome your return to us as the supreme and unconditional sovereign of this universe of your own making, serving, and completed understanding. In your stead I now reign. I assume jurisdiction of all Nevedon as acting sovereign during the interim of your seventh and mortal bestowal on Urantia. And to you, Gabriel, I commit the safekeeping of the Son of Man about to be, until he shall presently, and in power and glory, be returned to me as the Son of Man and the Son of God. And Gabriel, I am your sovereign until Michael thus returns. Then immediately, in the presence of all Salvington assembled, Michael removed himself from our midst, and we saw him no more in his accustomed place, until his return as the supreme and personal ruler of the universe, subsequent to the completion of his bestowal career on Urantia. 4. The Incarnation Making 2-1 And so, certain unworthy children of Michael, who had accused their Creator Father of selfishly seeking rulership, and indulged the insinuation that the Creator Son was arbitrarily and autocratically upheld in power, by virtue of the unreasoning loyalty of a deluded universe of subservient creatures, were to be silenced forever, and left confounded and disillusioned by the life of self-forgetful service which the Son of God now entered upon as the Son of Man, all the while subject to the will of the Paradise Father. But make no mistake, Christ Michael, while truly a dual origin being, was not a double personality. He was not God in association with man, but rather God incarnate in man. And he was always just that combined being. The only progressive factor in such a non understandable relationship was the progressive self conscious realization and recognition by the human mind of this fact of being God and man. Christ Michael did not progressively become God. God did not at some vital moment in the earth life of Jesus become man. Jesus was God and man, always and even forevermore. And this God and this man were and now are one, even as the paradise trinity of three beings is in reality one deity. Never lose sight of the fact that the supreme spiritual purpose of the Michael bestowal was to enhance the revelation of God. Urantia mortals have varying concepts of the miraculous, but to us who live as citizens of the local universe, there are few miracles. And of these, by far the most intriguing are the incarnational bestowals of the Paradise Sons. The appearance in and on your world by apparently natural processes of a divine son we regard as a miracle. The operation of universal laws beyond our understanding. Jesus of Nazareth was a miraculous person. In and through all this extraordinary experience, God the Father chose to manifest himself as he always does, in the usual way, in the normal, natural, and dependable way of divine acting.